In almost every product-based company's interview, there is always at least one tricky asynchronous JavaScript interview question. And that's exactly this new series is about. Welcome to asynchronous JavaScript most asked interview question series, where we will practice each and every async JS concept step by step. Before rushing into problem solving, make sure you watch the first episode. It covers all the core async concepts that you will need. So grab your editor, code along with me and don't skip any video. By the end, async JavaScript will feel simple and interview ready. So let's get started. In this first video, we'll talk about simple set timeout based interview questions. They are pretty simple, but they make a foundation of the timers. Let's read the first question. The question is print hello world with a delay of three seconds. These kind of questions are very much asked in the very fresher or junior level interviews. But yeah, still they are important for the foundation. But we have to print hello world with a delay of three seconds like when we are running the script after the three seconds the hello world should be printed for these kind of questions we should use set timeout set timeout and do you know this set timeout is not part of javascript itself but it is part of the web apis or the runtime like in the browser the browser or v8 provides this and it's not part of the native javascript in set timeout uh, we need to give a callback uh, we need to give a callback this is a callback function and we can give one timer here or delay if this this timer is in milliseconds we have to set a delay of three seconds three seconds means three thousand milliseconds we put three thousand here and what we have to print we have to print hello world for printing in the console we use console.log and hello and let's keep it as it is hello world so this is about set timeout so let's run this and let's see how much time it will take one two three it should print it yes we got hello world after three seconds using this set timeout so how to clear this timeout so this set timeout returns one id which is basically a string for clearing the timeout we have one function clear timeout and in that we have to pass the string id so that it will clear the timeout so let's see if it runs now so the code is run but it didn't print anything why because as soon as we scheduled this code for three seconds after that immediately we cleared this timeout Timer. So that's how this timer is cleared and we are able to solve our question. Let's head over to the second question. So the second question is very much similar to the first one but it has one additional thing that we have to create one higher order function here. Like with the function which takes another callback as an input and runs it after two seconds. For that we need to create one higher order function. So let's call it delayed execution. Let's call it delayed execution. It will take one callback as an input and in that we have to use set timeout and make sure you always pass callback like this like the function itself and don't call this this is the biggest mistake most of the juniors developers do because they, they call it so we don't we should never call the function inside this set timeout we should only pass the reference of the function that is more important because what in in the end what we are doing if we have watched the first video we are just scheduling this callback into a queue we are scheduling this callback into the macro task queue that's why this needs to be called later that's why you don't have to call it immediately this is a very wrong thing this is very 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 wrong so don't call it delay is already given here two seconds is the delay yeah that's it and uh, when we execute it delayed execution and uh, we pass some callback here and that callback is nothing but so long two seconds and let's repeat it a couple of times let's see what happens run one two yeah so we got three results after two seconds for this we have created one function that takes the callback and it skills those callback to run up to the given time like the two seconds yeah so this was the question two so the next question is print numbers from one to ten with one second delay using set timeout many of you must be thinking this is very easy question but yeah this is a tricky question that is asked mostly in the interviews just to test your asynchronous javascript knowledge let's test this most of the people will solve it like this let me show you let i equals to one i is less than 11 and i plus plus and then as we have to print from one to ten with one second delay what they will do is set timeout 
and here they will add some callback console.log and here they will we have to print i that's why here they will put i and what they will do is will because in the question it is written one second delay that's why they will add one second here and boom what will happen let's let's try to run this what what happened is it printed one to ten that is fine but it didn't print one after another and in between the delay was not one second like the the expectation is we should print one first then after one second we should print two then after one second we should print three and so on okay but this doesn't happen here why because you are putting some constant time here so let's see what happens behind this we have one macro task queue yeah macro task queue right where this set timer callbacks are inserted after the timer is over what what happened is for the first run like when the i is one it will put this thing immediately in this in this thing right but after one second like after one second it will put it into macro task queue but at the same time because for all the iterations the time is over right for all the iterations the time is over that's why everything like here the console log one will be there here the console log two will be there everything will be put immediately into the macro task queue and everything will be run that's why you can see everything is run one after another so how to solve this so that the ideal behavior should be first the console log one should be put here after one second after one second is complete we should remove this one and console log 2 should be put here after one second after one second of, of printing 2 we should put 3 here after one second of printing 3 we should put 4 here how can we solve this there is a simple trick to it because the time goes in one direction we have to put separate timings for all these callbacks like the first the i is equal to 1 should run after one second from the starting of the code the i equals to 2 should run after two seconds from when the code is run the i equals to 3 should run after 3 seconds that's how we can see that everything every number is printed one after another so let's try that for that what we can do is one simple trick is i into 1000 what will happen is for i equals to 1 the delay would be 1 second for i equals to 2 the delay will be 2 seconds for i equals to 3 it will be 3 seconds as well let's try to run this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10. The code ran one after one. That was the important thing in this and uh, yeah, interviewers mostly ask this to trick you. We have the final problem on this side timeout. The question number 4. Print the numbers from 10 to 1. We have to print reverse with 1 second delay using set timeout. That's fine. The, it was the similar to the previous problem. But one additional condition here. Don't use let or post. We have to use pre-ES6 features to solve this problem. This is the tricky part of this. Let's Let's try to solve this problem. Let's create a for loop here. We have to use where here. Where was to 10. Okay. And it will be a reverse loop because we have to print it reverse or greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus. So let's try to write one timer here. Set timeout and let's print it. And so draw it and print i. And, and as we have to print it reverse, what we can do is 10 minus 10 minus i into 1000. Why this? Uh, because when we are going forward what we were doing is uh, we have to print in the increasing order of time like i into thousand but when we are reverse we have to uh, subtract i from 10 because we'll get the numbers in from the reverse like if the number is 10 if the number is 10 so 10 minus 10 that is 0 it will print it immediately the next number is 9 10 minus 9 the next number like which will have the timer of one second which will be 9 for the next 8 it should be of the two seconds so that's how we have to manage the time that's why 10 minus i in 2000 okay let's run this and see what what is happening see there is something missing here right because it is not expected that that we want right what what is missing here there is a fundamental concept here that that was not there in the earlier example we are using where here right? so that is the important part here where what is different between where and let where has only local that is a function and global scope but let has the block scope. So what is happening here we are using where right by the time this code this internal code is timed right 
write is a sync code. So it will be run after the sync code. But by the time this code is running, this for loop, which is a synchronous code, is already run. And also the value of i, because it is in the global scope or the, the outer scope, the value of i by the time this code is running is already updated. By the time this code is started running, this code is part of a macro task queue. But before running this, before running this, the sync code, like the synchronous code is run. But at the synchronous code, the value of i, value of i is already updated and that is minus one. So while this is running, okay, while this callbacks are running, this callbacks are running, they will pick the updated value of i that is minus one at that moment. That's why they are printing minus one, one by one. You got the point. This is a bit tricky to understand, but this is the basic difference between block scope and the where scope. So this was a tricky question. How, how can we fix it? How can we fix it without using let? We can use immediately invoked functions here. What we can do because where has a function scope as well. What we can do is we can create a function which will have some input j. Uh, let's put it here and let's print j. Here also we we'll put j and uh, this function will be immediately invoked, right? This function will be immediately invoked, right? We have we, there is a syntax problem to wrap it into the curly brackets and we made it call that function and for the for the value of j right the value of j will pass the value of i right so it will create a copy of i and internally it will have its own scope it is kind of a, a let we are using here so let's run this 10 9 8 7 6 4 3 2 yeah that's it that's how we fix the code using the three just six features and we didn't use the let and cost so that's it for this video in this video we discussed four important problem patterns for the set timeout of the timers which are always asked in the interviews practice this and see you in the next video